Speed roller dies are expensive. Can you 3D print them? Okay, here's the deal. I have a bead roller over here. It's a it's a Chineseum one, uh, made by Eastwood or made by whatever Chineseum place builds all the cheap ones that everyone sells under their own name. Four or five different names uh, with different colors. Mine's blue. You may not know, but Eastwood has a new one. It's painted black and it costs more money. So good job there. Uh, Woodward Fab is the same. Anyway, it comes with these dies. I have just a selection of them. I think these came with these. Are, this is like a, a standard bead. Um, this is just a tipping die, so it's just a, a thing to make a line. These are offset tipping dies, which you can do fancy stuff with. There are so many different dies. So many. There's even this urethane one. Some people just use a skateboard wheel. But they're expensive. They, they really add up. So I decided to try 3D printing some. I got a few right here. We're going to give them a shot. This one here, that's called a roundover die. The idea is you put the, the metal in here and it creates a, an angle, an arc, and say you have this arc on one and then you have another arc on another, you can weld it together and you have a nice uh, full 90 degree radius there. I forget exactly how big the radius is on this, but I have, a, I have an interesting like a guide here. Some of the ones you can buy have that. And uh, they even has like a stopper, so when it's fully compressed and it's stopped, you can see there's there's space between there. So that's important because the sheet metal needs a place to go. So that's that's just how I decided to do that. Uh, this has a flat spot to match the, the bead roller thing. The metal ones have a set screw. I did not do a set screw. It, it, this might work. Who knows? This one, these are louver dies. Uh, the idea here is uh, some of these will cut will cut a slot and make the louver at the same time. These obviously won't because they're plastic. But if you have a slot cut, you can run this and it'll create a louver, which is popular if you know if you see hot rods, they're often covered in louvers. These obviously won't cut metal, but I just kind of wanted to see if it works. And the reason I chose louvers and roundover dies is because I don't have those. And a set of louver dies is like a hundred bucks. So, you know, who who wants to spend that, right? I mean, obviously I would, but I'd I, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not made of bead roller dies. Give me a break. Now for metal, usually they do something like, you know, sheet steel. This is 22 gauge, but these are plastic. So I'm going to set that aside. I have this, which is just aluminum sheet. I think it's 25 thousandths or something. It's very thin, thinner than I would like to use, but it's all I got for that. These, which are some dryer vent pieces, also in aluminum. Some some of these vents, these vent things are galvanized steel. This one happens to be aluminum. And then I have this big, nice and shiny one, which is also aluminum venting, but it's super duper thin. There, it's like it's like paper. So we're gonna start with this. Then if the dies survive, we're gonna go to this. If they survive, we're gonna go to this. And then we're probably gonna go to this and destroy them. So yeah, just just gonna kill these off. If they work at all, if they work like even up to these, like if they work to this, I'd be super stoked. But if they get through here, I'll probably reprint these in nylon, much thicker, like PETG or nylon, uh, so they'll be a bit tougher. That brings me to something. This is like a, a rubber urethane thing. These are hardened steel. This is PLA, which is which is a, a stiff, very stiff plastic, but it's very weak. It's very brittle. It's not very tough. Uh, someone on Instagram told me that uh, if you print these in PETG, which is a stronger kind of plastic, uh, that's good. But if you go, if you look around, you can actually find bead roller dies made of nylon. Like, not printed, but you've probably turned on a, on a lathe. But they're made of nylon. They're for making things in aluminum without marring the surface, because steel can, can really screw up aluminum. So I'm not totally crazy here, okay? not crazy for this particular reason. And my printer uh, can do, it can do nylon. And I can model up any of these. I model these up in Fusion 360. Picture if I can find it. I've been messing around with Fusion 360 a lot lately. It seems to go from uh, model to, to uh, STL to 3D print pretty easily. I've even been using it to make like parts to build a match plate for, for uh, metal casting, for bronze specifically, if you saw that recently. Uh, I ran into a snag building the match plate. Uh, so that's not ready this week, but you know, in, in the future you'll see that. So now we're gonna put these on and give it a twist. Get it, cause you twist the crank, give it a crank. 
whatever. I can't do transitions. I suppose I'll do the round over dies. Uh, there's a couple of different kinds of round over dies. They seem to be uh, with this fence or without it. I made it with the fence because, you know, any little bit of guide is going to help me suck less. So with this, I'm just going to get it so it's set. I'm not going to cram it in all the way. I'm going to go like just feed it in a little and then feed it in a little more and then a little more as it kind of creates the edge. It's a constant radius. So I'm hoping that means something. All right. First test with the paper thin metal. Um, it didn't bend it. Didn't bend it hardly at all. Okay, I wonder if this is just so thin that you can bend it and it springs back. So we're gonna step up the thickness. Nope, okay. We're learning here. Thin, thin stuff, pointless. I suppose I'll try to run it right here, just to see. I would like a thicker piece of aluminum, like by thicker I mean wider. Wider and thicker. This will probably work. Okay, we got, a, we got an arch there. I'll just go in full depth, I guess. 25 thousandths thick. This is very thin, thin aluminum. It's got a curve to it. I call that a success. So I guess straight up to the top of the list. This isn't looking too screwed up, especially considering how I dropped it earlier. Let's we'll go straight to the steel. 20 gauge, 20, 22 gauge steel. This is thinner steel than I than I really plan to use very often. It uh, it it worked. This is a pretty gentle radius, so it's you know it's not not trying to move too much metal all at once. Well, that went much better than I had planned on it. So I'm going to make up a bunch more of these. Probably still going to print them in nylon because they'll, they'll last better. You know, they don't even look that damaged. You know, they're kind of dirty and oiled, but preliminary test says it's okay. Pretty cool. These weren't even printed very thick. I think it's three, three layer shell thickness and 10% infill. Pretty, pretty light duty. Now there's some really cool things you can do with bead rollers, especially with, uh, with different profiles and mixing top, different top and bottom dies. Would always be fun. So far the only thing I've done are like beads and like flanges and stuff, like simple bead roller stuff. But it would be cool to kind of get into more of the, the style-y, arty stuff. Especially if I can make my own profiles. Because I could just think up a profile, my own custom profile, and then just whip it up in Fusion and print it. For any of you 3D printing geeks out there, use Fusion 360. Uh, going into Slicer, Slick 3R, however you pronounce that, the Prusa version, and then printed on a Prusa Mark II S. Yeah. Just for giggles, I'm not going to cut on this aluminum, and I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to start partway through and just kind of crank her in. What gives first, my bravery, the aluminum, or the threads on this? I'm not going to crank it anymore. I'm out of bravery. Yeah, as I expected, the plastic dies are not cutting a groove like some of the metal dies claim to. Nope, they're supposed to have a groove there, although it did tear a groove right there. Hmm, they may need more clearance. Okay, once more, but I cut a groove in it. I haven't cleanly filed away any of the crap from the groove, though, so this will be interesting. Let's see, I'll try to get it started about where it starts. So I line the cut up with this edge, so this is the this, the straight edge, and this is the arched edge. Okay, I see an issue. It's spreading the crease apart, not necessarily holding it. Okay, so it kind of almost did it, but it tore this again. Two points to make here. This is pretty thin aluminum, so that's probably just tearing because I'm trying to push it too hard, and two, there might not be enough clearance between the two dies, you know? There needs to be some clearance for the metal to go. And I modeled it in there, but when it printed, I printed it like this, I think. One of them. One of them was probably pointed the wrong way. And the overhang led to some issues. So uh, I'll probably need to model in a bigger gap. Fortunately, I can do that pretty easy with Fusion. And then uh, reprint them, and then do a better job finishing the prints. Lesson learned there, but I can't give up just yet. That's quitter talk, because I also cut a groove in a piece of steel. It's probably going to destroy these dies, but that's fine. They don't fit anyway. Not that I'm bitter about that or anything. Okay, that's going in pretty tough, so we're going to give this multiple passes. There. Crank it a little more. 
you know, you don't have to do all the shaping in one pass, or so I've been told. Huh. Okay, so for whatever reason, my quick and dirty bead roller dies, which I thought would be great for shaping aluminum, suck at aluminum, and work for steel. That's a PLA bead roller die. Worked for steel. Figure that out. It actually looks really nice here. The edges look cruddy, uh, but with these you have to finish the edges with a different method, a different tool, or like a sandbag and some other junk. I'm not gonna do that right now. Another thing I notice, there's an extra line here, so probably gonna have to allow for some of that in the bead roller die as well. Crazy! Who knew? So there you have it. 3D printed bead roller dies that actually worked in PLA. This is just going to be a proof of concept type video, but screw proof of concept. I'm going to go straight to production. Not for sale though. I mean like for my personal use.